Hey there everyone, welcome. Uh, I'm back with one more video. Friends, uh, in my last video, I had discussed that, uh, uh, you know, how UDFs can decrease the performance of your uh, Spark job. Actually, if you're using, if you're creating uh, UDFs in Python, then the performance will be even, you know, worse. So it, the performance will be very, very bad. So recently in Spark, Spark 2.3, uh, there is a new feature which has been brought in, uh, which is about uh, uh, using vectorized or, uh, uh, you know, using vectorized uh, UDFs. So when I say vectorized, I mean to say that uh, earlier in, in normal UDF, each row is processed one by one. Uh, in vectorized UDF, uh, Spark, takes group of rows and convert it into pandas series so pandas is using numpy library uh, if you are aware with uh, aware about uh, uh, python numpy then pandas uses numpy underline and numpy uses linear algebra to apply any operation on that which is very fast so if you are using uh, a Python UDF and it is decreasing the performance of your Spark job, then you should consider using uh, Pandas UDF or a vectorized UDF. This will drastically improve the performance of your UDF. So as part of this video, I'm going to show you a demo, which will show you that a normal UDF, uh, you know, if it is uh, uh, used, uh, then what is the performance? What is the uh, you know, uh, time it is taking, and if we convert it into a pandas UDF, a vectorized UDF, how drastically the performance is changing. So uh, let's not waste time. Let us start with our video. Uh, to record the time, to see how much time a step or a set of commands are taking, I will run this command. Just import time. Then I will define a, a function plus function which will take two uh, uh, variables as input a and b and then just add it and return it cool this is also done now i'll register this function as a uh, as a udf cool and uh, you know let me what i'm doing here is that i'm just recording the time at the start of this cell and then i'm creating some dummy data i'm creating two columns uh, you know a and b which are essentially same because both are id columns and then i'm doing addition of that and then i'm running a count operation on that and collecting the data and then i'm testing the time how much time this block has taken let us see how much time this block takes cool it may take a few seconds uh, you know it may take around uh, 80 seconds if there are enough resources on a cluster it may take around uh, you know uh, around 120 130 seconds if there are less and lesser amount of resources on a cluster so uh, i know this because i have run this uh, program just before uh, recording this video so we have to wait for a few seconds so uh, I i'll explain a concept you know uh, uh, you know before uh, this finishes so uh, what is happening here? So what Spark is doing is that uh, instead of running this UDF on each row in the partition and in the in our uh, data frame, uh, it is taking bunch of rows and converting that bunch of rows into a pandas data frame, pandas series or data frame with the help of something called Apache Arrow. So if you are aware, Apache Arrow is used to do cross-platform commands and, and I'll show you that it's a very good project which is now being used by spark also Apache arrow is a cross language development platform for in-memory data so what is happening is that uh, we have uh, our data set in in uh, in Scala and uh, Python is the language in which we want to convert it and process it in memory so Apache arrow is helping us 
converting this very quickly and uh, then do a uh, spark sorry pandas operation on top of it okay guys this our block of code has completed it has taken 88 seconds cool so now you know let us see what is the execution plan so you will see here that uh, we have created a range uh, we have created our data then we have selected both the columns and then there's a batch eval python so batch eval python means it is a udf plus udf which is being done here there's no optimization done here as from python it is just a function which is called for each row in our data frame now let us try to optimize it uh, we are importing importing few few of the modules pandas udf and uh, then you know we have defined the function in a similar way what we had defined earlier and uh, then we are just uh, you know uh, annotating that function using pandas udf uh, annotation let us run it cool it has also completed now this is uh, what i am doing here is exactly same what i have done here okay so let me run this part cool okay it may also take few seconds to run uh, ideally it should finish in around 20 seconds i guess so once this completes i'll show you the execution plan and explain the execution plan how it was different from the execution plan that we saw earlier so it has taken around 32 seconds so it the time may you know vary uh, you know sometimes it sometimes i have seen it is 18 seconds sometimes i have seen it is 20 seconds 23 seconds also so but the time is uh, you know almost one third of uh, what we had uh, seen earlier so on a large scale on a very huge data set uh, you know if you are using pandas udf instead of a normal udf in python then it can be a very good thing so uh, you know so after you know if you take our learning from our, my last video and this video what i'm trying to say is that uh, you should try to avoid udfs uh, if you would udf in some situations are not avoidable uh, always try to implement the udf in scala language uh, you know i will get in the detail that why scala language udf are faster than python udf in a separate video because that that needs a different kind of explanation and uh, if you are not able to define a scala udf then uh, you know there could be some reason that you don't have a skill or you don't uh, want to because of some other reason then uh, if you are using python udf try to define a scala uh, try to define a pandas udf because the operation will be then uh, vectorized and it will be far more efficient now let us see the uh, execution plan so earlier you know whole of execution plan is same uh, only difference is that instead of seeing batch eval python we are seeing a step here which named as arrow eval python so this is this step is implementation of apache arrow so that's why you see arrow evil python it is also running the uh, udf but this udf is now uh, vectorized because apache arrow has converted into pandas uh, series the data underlying data and then uh, you know pandas is running a uh, vectorized operation which is very fast guys i i hope that this uh, you know video was very useful for you you know you saw the benefit of using a vectorized uh, uh, udf instead of a normal udf uh, i hope you like the video please subscribe to my channel and share the video with your friends thank you